like this. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So uh, on Thursday we had one moto and then it rained and then we didn't race for almost eight hours. We went from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It took forever to reclaim the track because just that one moto had turned up the track enough when it rained super hard for a long, long time. And the track had been churned up with one moto and um, man, it was a mess. Then we had even more rain at RU today, but luckily it started overnight and the track had already been sealed in. So I could not believe the amount of rain we've taken. This is the infield, how bad it is. The track is definitely raceable. It's, it's surprisingly good. Never use the infield of a motocross track as your guide high because that's where they push the mud to. That's uh, Clark Robbins out of New Jersey on the Hunter Racing Machine looking to make a name for himself with Tiger Wood right behind him in our 125 class. So since I last did a show, a lot has changed. I was talking a lot about Casey Cochran kind of being the uh, the, the early star of the week. Well, that's been completely upended as often happens in the three moto format. Cochran in his third, two to four, the yellow hay bells there. He just had a routine crash in the right-hander at the bottom of that tunnel, landed right on his shoulder, popped his shoulder out, did not finish the moto. So that's it for his uh, title chances in that class. Now, that Daniel Blair character who runs the Rockstar Husky amateur side says that they put the shoulder back in. Cochran was even able to attend the prom last night. On track school holds a prom at Loretta's for the high school students. Cochran went to prom and he's gonna race and try to salvage the title in another class. That changed things quite a bit. In the pro sport division, well, Mark Finnis just made a big statement in the 250 pro sport class. Now, Finnis has been a very good prospect for a while. Um, just on the verge, he needed that big breakthrough ride, and he just got it. He got second in Moto 1, and he just whole shot and left everybody in uh, Moto 2. And uh, he's a pretty wild personality, Finnis. If he can hold on to Moto 3 and get that 250 Pro Sport title, that would, to me, be that breakout ride he's looking for. He trains at Club of X, rides for Gas Gas, but uh, obviously I don't think he has anything lined up beyond as a pro necessarily, so uh, he needs to make it happen here, and he has. All right, cool story brewing here. Uh, my buddy from New Jersey, Chris Hunter. You got a moto win, buddy. Two of them this week. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this one, I mean, this is pretty legit. It's pretty straight up, I'd say. This is straight up. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're putting any so water down for I got to get away from these speakers. Follow me, and I'm just blowing your uh, video there. So my buddy Chris Hunter from New Jersey, when I was growing up as a flagger, he was like, he had a same Manchester Honda bike like Bradshaw. That was a legit ride. Yes. And uh, follow me this way. And just tell everybody your final moto as a pro. Who were you battling with for points? Oh, your guy. Justin Brayton. Justin Brayton. Yes. Yeah, I think he might have got his first point when I should have had my first point. Was it close? Were you battling? I don't know. You don't remember a long that. time ago. Okay. And you were like, who is this guy? I do know I was inside the top 10 at the start and went uh, backwards to 21st, so there's that. There's that. Okay, so <laughs> you decided to come all the way back. Come on now and uh, come back race again. I love your story because you went to college, yeah. you became a computer programmer. Software engineer, yes. Then you decided to come back and race and get back into moto, and next thing you know, you got a team out here and you got a moto win. Yeah, man, we uh, we just love racing. Yeah. You know, we don't do this for money or anything. This yeah, is you have because, a real job. Yeah, I actually spend money to do this. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. So, uh, yeah, we just love doing it. We did a great family, you know, I, I grew up racing with Kurt, Clark's dad. Oh, okay. So, you know, he was, their family was salt of the earth people. They would take their shirt off their back for you, yeah. you know? And when I saw Clark doing well, and little know, they're actually related to the Dangler family also. Oh, good Big, genius. big Moto family here. Yeah, so, Joel Dangler, yeah. Um, and Bruce. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just a lot of names. You know, you just yes. keep going. So, um, so it's, it's special, you know, it's, it's fun. So you're just doing it to help? You just want to be involved? And I still like racing, you know? Yes. I'm in that 40 class trying to get a top 10 again. Yeah. Put another one in the vault, whatever. That's right. Uh, I remember moto podiums out here for you back in the day, though. Yeah, I had yeah, a couple. Yeah. I had one moto win. Yep. I've got two second overalls, which that'll get you a $1.50 and that'll get you a coat. But, yeah, um, it won't get you in the darn program, right? Yes. Yeah. That's cool that you're doing it, though. And I, I always want to show that side that a lot of it down here is not it's not return on investment, it's just helping people you like. No, we just, cool. it's so much fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, congrats. Two moto wins. Clark Robbins, remember that name? Uh, he was also, uh, there is an amateur donations event in a way. It's called the World Junior Cup, and he was racing over there a couple weeks ago. This guy. 
It's a Daniel Blair guy. Um, that's probably the side of amateur racing you don't hear uh, as much about. I think everybody always talks about how gnarly the parents are and the pressure and all that. Um, and I've only learned the slightest bit of like a toe dipped in the water as far as uh, all week. Everybody's like, where's your kid? Isn't he racing here? And I'm like, dude, if I find time to take him riding once a month, I'm doing good. The idea that we even qualify for Loretta's, it's impossible. And the amount of work that it takes is just mind boggling. I know that the very first thing that people want to say is like, these parents take it too seriously. They need to chill out. They need to let the kids have fun. Um, when you even get a slight hint, as I have, of the effort that it takes these days to do well. And that's not just financially. Obviously, it takes a lot financially, but I still say that motocross compared to other motorsports, and I know what it's like. I live in Mooresville, North Carolina, what families are doing <laughs> in car racing to try to get their uh, sons and daughters involved in that. They're spending way, way more, way, way more. And you have to. You can't even compete unless you spend money. Don't even bother showing up. Uh, here you could show up on lesser equipment yeah, and still compete. Watching the, doses, the money is a huge now. part of it, it like but it's the effort. I mean, if you're going to take your kid riding four or five days a week, keeping bikes up, there. there's just so many hours of loading up and driving, or you have to drop your kid off somewhere. It's just a much gnarlier existence um, than you could really imagine to see people do it or you do it yourself. So to tell people, just chill, man, and have fun, it's so hard to do when you're putting in that kind of effort. But I remind everybody of this. Remember the level that this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be Olympic level, Olympic trials level. This is supposed to be the 40 best in the, in the game, at least America, but there are some international riders. If you're playing basketball or football or soccer and you were saying you're competing in an event that had the 40 best nine-year-old soccer players in America, <laughs> do you know how gnarly that would be? That would not be hobby at that point. That would be serious effort with coaching and money and travel and playing seven days a week probably. You have to remember what level this is. I feel that this sport, because it's a little bit smaller, it has a smaller participant base, we kind of marry the, as soon as you buy a dirt bike and you go racing, you think, well, maybe I could qualify for Loretta's. I don't even know if these other events have, like soccer does it even have an event that only the best 40 even compete in, uh, that are even eligible. I don't know if it has an event like that. But think of how crazy it would be as you get your kid a soccer ball and think like, that's the level we should expect to be. 40 best in the country is gnarly. So all the things that come with this, the homeschooling, the travel, the money, the effort, remember the level they're actually all trying to compete in here, which is the last 5% probably. Uh, keep that in mind. Now, one other story I want to tell for now, I'll give you more show later, is when we had the mud and we had the rain, it leads to this. How are they going to fit in these motos when we had two massive rain delays? So one of the thoughts was that they were going to give everybody a third moto, uh, except the 50cc classes, partially because the 50 classes obviously are going to struggle the most in the mud. They don't know if they're going to fit them in. That led to a whole bunch of 50 parents deciding impromptu to come have a meeting here. This is our office trailer. So. Uh, we saw the group growing and growing, 50 parents coming down. And it actually worked out for the best, believe it or not, because Tim Cotter of MX Sports came out, he got to talk to everybody, they got to vote on a couple things, uh, how our site lap's gonna work and things like that. Um, and they got to talk it out, which you wouldn't get to do unless you somehow got everybody gathered over here. But there was a lot of, oh, the 50 parents, oh, of course the 50 parents, 50 parents are gnarly. Well, look, you can't always let, if there's three or four gnarly 50 parents, there's Four 50 classes of 40 riders. That's 160 riders. You know, do the math of two parents each ish, right? You're looking at 300 parents. If you see three or four people getting mad out of 300, it's not as bad as it looks. The mob there, it was a mob. I mean, there was a whole bunch of people up on that door, but it actually led to a discussion of how we're going to do this. Now, obviously, the parents want to get all three motos in. Who wouldn't? And uh, they're going to try. We're uh, doing some things. They're going to run all the site laps tomorrow in the morning at once just separating by bike size and then just run motos instead of doing a wow. sight lap before every moto because that always eats up a lot of time and they're cutting the moto length a lot of things like that to try to get them all in but i get it uh as soon as they said they might not do the third moto of 50s the 50 parents are very upset and that leads to everyone being like ah oh, the 50 parents but i've now seen how much effort the 50 parents have put in just to even get their kid to qualify for this event it makes it very hard to put in that kind of work take your kid to a track over and over and over and over and over and over and all year and then you qualify and you get here and just be like ah ah who cares so 
it's just an unrealistic situation. And uh, also, I don't want people to hear that there was this rumor of the 50 parents going over there and why wasn't it addressed? Well, I just told you exactly how it happened. Because remember the big drama we had last year, uh, which I talked about on the show, but I didn't have all the details up time of the Hayden Deegan bike claim gate. Remember that one? It's funny. I heard people saying over and over, like, that's never going to happen again. They're going to make the rules where that'll never happen again because the AMA will make rules to protect the factories. Um, no, they actually made it easier and better as far as the bike claim is concerned. Uh, the price that you have to pay to claim a bike did not increase one dollar compared to last year. It's the same exact amount of money. And uh, now if you claim the bike, you cannot change your mind. And that was what it is. Last year, the Deacon deal, the bike was claimed. They wheeled the bike back. They brought it to the office. It was done. It was over. That bike was gone. It was the rider who made the claim who decided to change his mind. And that's where the bike was given back. So now if you do it, it's locked in. And uh, also you do have to have a parent there, which should have probably been done in the first place. You have to have a parent with you. It's a little weird that the parent was not with the rider when he decided to claim the bike. So that took care of that. But the uh, claim rule still exists. If you're Yamaha over here, what does that mean? Don't run an engine that you don't want other people to get your hands on. That's it. That's what the rule's supposed to do. And that's what the rule is now going to do. So uh, I just heard all these people saying, yeah, you're going to see the rule change massively next year. They're going to make it like a hundred grand to claim a bike. They did not do that. High traffic area. I want to show everybody this. This is what Loretta's is really all about. Um, the hangout zone. This is just the vending area. And then it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And goes. You'd have to drive to get to the end of the camping area. I mean, it literally goes for miles. That's why everybody has golf carts and side-by-sides, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, back here is the creek. People want these parking spots back here. The vendors get a few of them, but the campsites that are near the creek, people come here like a month before the race. They do realize in this sport, you're not gonna get the traditional stuff. Oh, Fro! You're not gonna get the traditional stuff, right? You're not gonna get the traditional, they have to have a prom here because you might not be able to go to a regular prom, et cetera, et cetera. Fro! I got waterproof boots to see how good I can do here. No, don't go that far. Well, I just washed them off. It's good. What's it's, up, bro? I was supposed to be done racing by now. Was it? You, that was the original yeah, schedule. Well, 4.30, yeah. We'll go to the office and complain. That's what people do. Yeah. Complain that you're racing too much. I hear the lights not very long. No, ago. no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I got to take advantage. It's my only day to come hit the creek. Oh, man. Who knows what tomorrow's going to hold. I got to race a couple motos. Yeah things are going to happen really fast and, and then you're going to be done and then i'm going to be done so you had not been in the creek until now no i haven't been in the creek until now my son jagger's over there oh my gosh it's your just, son's that big now your son's an hey, adult bigger than you. well a lot of people are bigger than you but yeah, yeah. I, I, that means i'm lean mean machine is what you, you meant go. by that is that what you meant yeah. by that uh you happy with how it's going right now i know that yeah. the racing you've been like you still have it in you, you if it doesn't go your way you're still like Ugh. well my the yeah, goggle well, deal and all that yeah. i was just disappointed with the 50 moto because I mean, I haven't been able to keep Brown in sight all week. Yeah. And then, oh, I go two, three laps there. Things were looking good. The mud, I felt great on the bike. Yeah. And the big thing was I was just having fun. Yeah. And yeah. then I had that little issue with my goggles, and it's like, really, this moto? Yeah, and that's one in a million. Yeah. You, the, yeah. They, they, and they had to do a goggle swap. Yeah, but it, yeah. But, but it, it, it felt good to be out there running good pace. And the more that, you know, more time I get on the track, the yeah. better I feel. I mean, yeah. I'm setting second in the 40 and tied for first and second in the 50. So two happen. more to go. It could happen. Yeah. Spent a lot of time in this creek through the years. All right. Spent a lot of time in this creek through the years. Too, though. Oh, you made it sound like we're in a rush. Oh, we're that good. Jack and Dad Coke in the hand, though. All right, sign me up. The waterproof boots worked. Jeff Emig, remember him? So it's gonna be fun. We got a schoolboy two moto coming up. This is staging at Loretta's, and I feel like a lot of this is designed this way, um, where you have to sit here in staging for a long time, maybe 45 minutes before your moto. It's under the guise of make sure you're there early so you don't miss your moto. Shout out to my man Kellen Brower doing the announcing right now. But what I think it really accomplishes is, to the is shout out to Monster, by the way, for giving it. I didn't even know we had this back here. We got a big screen. We have a big screen back here. I didn't even know that. 
Um, right, but what it really makes you do is hang out and think Alfred about your darn high pressure you. moto. So go down the back straight What's up, Drew? Oh, man, oh, for hours, hours, sit there, there and think about your moto. Normally it's super hot out, not so bad right now. Brandon Sharp, right you're now, a mechanic, you're a racer, a little bit of everything. Bit of everything. Who's your, you're just, uh, best? Really well. best. Best. Are you well, best, well, mechanic? best mechanic? Well, you best mechanic. So, so you've been, you put him on the podium, didn't you? We did you get third? So far. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We'll mechanic, coach, racer. I mean, you race Supercross okay. this year. There Supercross, okay, outdoors. So I did a couple, and then your the arm destroyed that, itself again. So. Oh, is that it right there? Red scars. Red scars. You digging this gig? It's all right. It's fun. You would rather be? I'd like to be on the track. Like to be on the track. Yeah. Logan Best getting podiums of Brandon oh, Sharp, oh, oh, coach, oh, oh. trainer, That's the worst feeling. mechanic. I think he might get up Again, race Supercross for Bar X Suzuki this year. Anyway, the whole point when you get back here is it's a lot of time for these racers. Good to see you again. Yes to think about their race. And that puts pressure on. And as I always say about Loretta's, I know it seems weird for the industry to decide so much of the talent of riders based on one race. And that is weird. However, remember how often we hear stories about this rider is so great during the week, but the pressure, man, when the lights come on at Anaheim, when it's all on the line, when it's, you know, he practices so well, but he doesn't race so well. That's what this incidentally creates. You have to deal with pressure when you're sitting down here for 45 minutes. And these kids know that dad has put everything into the program and it really only matters here. In some ways, your whole year, good, bad, is based on this. And that pressure is really the test. Can you handle it or can you not? There's tons of talent out there. We all know, what do they say, right? The big separator is mentality, the mental side, who's got it? This pressure cooker that we're in right now will determine a lot of that. And that's ultimately why someone who rips during the week and doesn't perform here, you might say, well, what difference does it make? It's only one race, but that's the point to see if you can perform when you have to get it done. All right, I found him. Do you remember this? The coolest guy in the sport, but I haven't interviewed you. You are the coolest guy. You are the coolest guy. Well, I wanted to interview you, so I'm buttering you up. Thank you, I appreciate Kevin it. Kevin Windham, remember? Now, look, you speak great in interviews. So don't be shy. It's don't been be a shy. long time. Uh -huh. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to talk about. Stop. I, uh, I don't even know what side the shift lever and the clutches oh. and stuff are on anymore, so. I'm happy for you. I saw you hanging out here even last year. You get on equipment, you're just soaking it up. You get on equipment, you train riders, you're into it, but you, I don't think you have to do it. I think you want to do it. Oh, I definitely want to do yeah. it. It's a, uh, it is for sure, um, you know, just, just a, 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 it's what I love. I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't even want to call it a hobby. I, I mean, I, everybody here is moto through and through, and, uh, yeah. you know, obviously you got to make some decisions along the way in the path, and, um, Oddly enough, I got kids getting married. I got kids going to college. My wife and I are halfway to uh, empty nesting. And, and uh, the good thing is my kids absolutely love it. They love the sport. Uh, don't participate in it. They'll drive pit bikes and come out and watch us train at the facility. They, they love uh, And they come here? They're here? They're here, the whole family. Uh, I got I got fiancés. I got daughters. I got future son-in-laws. I got I got the whole, the whole gamut cool. here this week. My wife's here. Uh, so a good friend of mine, Craig. Uh, lit, lit the show, uh, started the show off right. You got a wonderful concert. So oh, we're Craig having, Morgan, yeah. yeah, we're, yeah. Having, we're having a time of our lives. And uh, yeah, I'm just moto through and through, as everybody here at the ranch is. Now, it was really cool. I saw you wearing a half marathon shirt yesterday. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you used to brag that you're like, I'm done training. Yeah. And yeah. now you're getting in shape. Yeah, I was, uh, so long story. I don't know how long this interview is supposed to be, but uh, I was having back issues and I went, had some epidural steroid injections, was in, uh, about to have a back surgery, and I said, you know, I'm just going to give this thing a whirl, and uh, learned a lot about myself through my training now. I, I used to be super defiant, didn't really like a lot of guys telling me what to do, and uh, I've tried to grow, and I'm 45 now. Okay. I, better, I better start, you know, changing now. some ways and maturing, <laughs> and uh, so the guys at the facility and what they have to do into, for today's racing, which, as you know, is a lot different than what we did in the 90s or even yeah. the 80s or whatever. Uh, but they've been inspiring to me, and so I've been doing all the road bike rides with them. Uh, I've competed in a couple half half uh, marathons. I've ran marathons. Uh, I've done a half marathon, but not in the race format. But that's my next goal. But half you run Ironman. twenty seven point whatever. Uh, twenty six two. Yeah. I can tell oh, you. Oh, twenty seven. Get the twenty seven. Twenty six two. There's no need to do twenty seven. <laughs> okay, I, don't, sorry. I don't even know if that's a race. I, I don't even know. Never heard of it. Maybe, right. maybe. I don't know. I'm new to this. But uh, no, it's just it's helped my health, and my back is good now, which. 
you know, who would think running would help your back? I lost yeah. 35 pounds. That obviously helped. 35 pounds and put on some muscle. That's some, that means a lot of fat I lost. And uh, yeah, just better clarity. And uh, I'm loving where I'm at and working with the guys. And uh, you know, feeling like a fountain of youth. Who knows what the future holds, man? You know? Well, that's the problem. Now you, you come yeah. in here all in shape and loving the sport that people want to ask you to race. But that's up to the wife, I think. That's yeah, that even your call? There, there's some powers that be that yes. aren't involved in this interview No, right I know. Now. She walked away. <laughs> she didn't want to know part of this. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it, we'll, we'll go back to the farm after this and do some work. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty inspired right now. But I got to... With the guys, I do a lot of section work. You know, yeah. Like, hey, I don't think this works. I'm like, oh, hold up. Yeah, let, let, let me get on the bike. I'll, uh, you know. So you do get on the bike. I do get on the bike, and I'm great at section work, but you got to hang lefts and rights and ten commandments and sand sections and all yeah, kind mud. of a start mud, mother nature. This is motocross, man. It's been a, a, a tough week here at the ranch for the last two days, anyway. But tracks coming around nice. Uh, just uh, tracks racing well. So you know, mix all that stuff to the heat and. Uh, the easiest day to say you're going to do Loretta's is the day after 2023. Oh, yeah. And then the work starts for 2024. You're like, damn, this is, a, this is tough. You know, because these guys do, man. They're, they work their butts off in, in ways that we didn't in the past. So uh, the sport's evolving and changing uh, right in front of our eyes. Yeah, the, the last thing you mentioned to me yesterday, you did not really ride during the week. And you were no, dominant. You had no. 18 motos in a row here, and you just rode on weekends. Yeah, three years straight, I was able to win here. And uh, we, we, we weekend raced all the time. The facility things didn't exist. and uh, But the beautiful thing thing about where I live, uh, you know, in Louisiana, now I'm in Mississippi, but kind of what what. Uh, we, we were able to go to Texas, we were able to go to Florida, yeah. we were able to go to the Carolinas and Georgia and Oklahoma. Ponca wasn't far from for us. So, uh, you know, a lot of the guys that, you know, these are two kind of the, hot, the hotbed right now is Florida and Georgia and stuff. Yeah. And you're kind of on that East Coast, so it makes Texas and, and out West uh, a long ways away. And uh, so that was real advantageous for us. We were able to travel, you know, within an eight hour window and hit really good competition from you know, the central part over to the East Coast. So uh, life was good for me back then. We rode all the time and, and it worked for us. And, uh, you know, yeah, had a really good run here at Loretta's. And, and uh, hey, technically this there. moto win streak is still going. It's alive. Uh, okay, it's, it's, careful. It's, it's, it's fairly dormant, but, yeah. you know, it still exists. It can be uh, it can be added to, I guess. So uh, Ooh, careful. Yeah, well, what are you trying to get out of me here, Weech? No, no, I don't want a commitment. You don't I want just, to get anything. You're, no, I just want people to get excited. You're stating facts. Yeah, you're just I'm stating just, facts right people now. People are going to be so pumped right now. <laughs> and the rest is up to you. All right, bro. All right, Thanks. good to chat with Kevin Windham, senior citizen representing our man Randy. Oh yeah, that's Kevin Windham, coolest guy, coolest guy. I don't say that about everybody. That's our show. Thanks to Race Tech. I just want to talk to K Dub. He's the best. He's actually out here in a dozer quite a bit. Farm 14 trains a lot of the riders. Landon Peppard, one of his students, just got to the podium in that Schoolboy 2 class, which I said I was going to update you on. Casey Cochran was riding well, despite the separated, sorry, dislocated shoulder. Had a good start, went down, came from last to fifth. So now he's got a 1-5, and uh, Christian Chanik now in control. I got to go into this tunnel. He just went... 3-1. Uh, he won that second moto, but he really needed to in those conditions, the Team Green Rider. So now Cochran's got to go out and win Moto 3. 250B is gone because he DNF second moto. So uh, pressure's going to be on, and the motos are shorter tomorrow. The plan is 12-minute motos for Saturday to make up time with all the time we lost in the mud. All right, that's it for Weed Show. Check out Racetech.com. You got this, right? We're good. Cody Groves, what up? Thanks for the help in the tower. And uh, that was Josh Cartwright that actually walked by when I was talking to Wyndham. Awesome to see how many people want to come down and hang out here and uh, have fun. That's really what it is. It's serious, but it's fun. I cannot explain how those two things happen together. I told you the seriousness of the 50 parents and all that. Thanks, guys. But at the same time, people love it so much, they don't know what to do with themselves when they don't come here, so they always come back. Pretty interesting. As I say, Hey guys, the most fun week of the year and the hardest week of the year all rolled into one. But we don't know what to do without it. See you tomorrow.